Hey programmers, with any type of show that you're building, you're gonna have sequences with multiple cues in it, right? I mean, we do this all the time, but for some reason, I see a lot of programmers not reference a tracking sheet when they're trying to figure out why a queue is doing what it's doing. The tracking sheet and sequence contents are great windows to tell you exactly what's going on. Both of these sheets allow you to see and edit your information without even having to play back the cues. I'm Kat West. Welcome to Console Trainer, where you can subscribe if you want more videos of me talking about how I like to push buttons when I'm programming a tour. First up, let's look at the tracking sheet. Here, data is arranged by queue with fixtures and attributes running horizontally, so I'm actually able to see all of the contents of all of my queues in one screen. This can be a lot of data, so we really want to use the built-in sorting tools. First off, because I have links selected on, this sheet will update for whichever sequence I select on my executors. Fixture sort works just like the fixture sheet, and I really like selection only for when I want to find data for a particular light in a sequence. Having feature sort turned on means that when I select a feature for my wheels, the sheet will automatically bring that feature to the left hand of the screen. I hate scrolling left and right, so I'm almost always filtering down data when I'm using this window. Because I can see all of my cues, this sheet is great for looking ahead when I want to figure out when something is or isn't going to happen in my sequence. It's also good for looking for those accidental hard values that got stored in and need to be updated to a preset. You've probably noticed that these values are in different color text, so let's take a look at what the colors in these sheets mean. Cyan is a new value. And the first queue in your sequence is always going to be full of cyan values because everything's new. Magenta is a tracked value. I didn't change the value for this parameter in a queue, so that value tracks. You'll notice that some of my dimmers look like they have no value, but on closer inspection, it's actually a magenta dot. The dot is specific in the MA to a dimmer value of zero, and because it's a magenta, we know that it's tracked. Green is something else you'll only find on dimmer. It's a new value, but more specifically, a new value on a dimmer that's lower than what it was previously. And finally, white is a blocked value. It's a value stored in a queue that happens to be the exact same value that it was in the previous queue. Blocked values aren't necessarily bad. Sometimes you want them in there to prevent data or changes in previous data from tracking into certain queues. But other times, blocked values are accidental, and maybe you want to clean that up. You can use the unblock keyword on your command line, or you can clean it up right here in the tracking sheet. I'm going to click on this intensity cell in Q3, and in the edit window, I want to pick unblock. There are options on the right that allow you to do things like unblock the entire queue or sequence, or this channel in all queues, but I just want to unblock this one parameter for this one light, so I'll pick selection. You can also edit your parameter data within this sheet by clicking on a parameter and selecting Edit. Your edits will track forward unless you turn on Edit Queue Only from the title menu. There's also some quick options if you need to remove data from queues like individual timing or effects. The option for Extract Preset would actually remove the preset reference in the queue and replace it with the current numeric values from that preset. Be careful with this one because it does exactly what it's supposed to do. If you were going to update that preset later, then this queue with the extracted preset is not going to update. Rather, it's going to keep the old numeric values. Now let's switch to sequence content. This window arranges your data more like the fixture sheet with rows of fixtures instead of queues, but you can only see the contents of one queue at a time. The text colors are exactly the same here as they were in the tracking sheet because that's console wide and you can grab any cell if you want to do some editing. If you are doing that, please note that you have an option at the top in the title bar that determines if your edits are queue only or not, just like in the tracking sheet. One of the cool things that the content sheet can do is it updates dynamically so it'll show you different queue contents as you play through your sequence. Right now, I'm set to current queue, so as I go forward, this window will update to show me the contents of whatever queue I'm currently playing. You can also look at the previous queue's content or use manual to enter a particular number. But what I really like is to set this to next queue. So it's always showing me what's gonna happen when I hit go. 
While we're thinking about tracking and sequences, I want to take a look at my Q0.5 and talk about a couple of ways that we can mark our sequences. And I'm not talking about just ensuring that your lights are in position before you turn them on. I'm talking about ensuring that all of your parameters have values on them at the top of your sequence. If you take a look at my Q0.5, you'll see a lot of cyan values and a lot of cells showing an all preset called default tour. This is a preset that I store into Q.5 in all of my main song sequences. Certainly some values will be other presets like positions, colors, gobos, all of that marked data so that my first Q starts in place. But the idea here is to eliminate any empty values on my parameters from the top of my sequence. This will make a difference when you're copying cues to ensure you don't get some sort of weird tracked look. It's also going to make my life a lot easier later on if I'm cloning. If you don't want to build your own preset in queue, the MA does allow you an option in the assign menu that you can turn on called Q0. It's a similar concept in that it makes sure all parameters have values at the top of your sequence, but it does reference the fixture profile's defaults, not a preset. Well, I hope this video gave you some ideas about how you maybe want to integrate the tracking sheet or the sequence contents into your workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.